Hi, I got distracted, so I started making a visual story game in the Godot game engine. And game engines aren't usually my thing, but with it getting more attention recently and being open source, I thought I should learn about how to use it. And today, I'm not going to go much into a lot of the details of how the engine works and things I've learned there. I'm going to focus on the GDScript programming language, and especially comparing it a bit with Python. So think of this as like GDScript for programmers, from someone who's still new in the engine and the language. And in Godot, there are multiple language options available, but the easiest to reach for is GDScript. And it's integrated well with your scene tree environment and with the editor generally, including things like debugger and a certain amount of hot code reloading and profiling and more. So GDScript, while it's a bespoke language for Godot, it's a language you might still want to reach for. Today, I'm going to focus on type safety and memory safety. And rather than work in the engine, where there's a lot of nice things like documentation available and autocomplete, I'm going to work in VS Code. I think it's possible I could set this up better for more features from VS Code as well, but for now, I just have syntax highlighting. And rather than serious game code, I'm going to focus on very simple examples. It turns out you can run GDScript scripts from the command line as long as you extend main loop or scene tree in your script slash class. Because every GDScript script file defines a class, whether you have these words here or not. Let's run it. We see Godot, headless, quit after we get started, and run this script here, which runs the underscore init function. And we could ignore this other class for a minute. We'll get to it soon. So in addition to some verbosity, we see the message hi printed out here. And here's an equivalent in Python, although I have some other stuff ready for exploration later. But mostly, I'm calling main. Main defines a string thing and prints it. Let's try that out. It says hi. Although it may be more fun if I time that as well. We can tell there's a little bit of overhead in getting Godot started compared to Python. We can also type check our Python file, which finds no errors. Say I try reassigning this to an int. Does MyPy care? And the answer is, yes, it does. And there are different type checkers for Python. I'm using some version of MyPy here. So this was a bad thing as far as MyPy is concerned. Let's do something similar here in GDScript. Thing equals 5. Let's run it. And we see an error here. It says, can't assign a value of type int as string. Notice it also says here, parse error. I find it gives that message whenever the error happens at static analysis time. If the error is only dynamic, you won't see that message. So what's happening here is that if I say colon equals in GDScript, it assigns the static type of thing as being whatever is inferred from this side. If I get rid of that equals, no errors. So let's put that colon back. Or we could even be explicit, string, and we get an error message. Now worth noting that there's another difference here already between GD and Python. Even though my Py says this is an error, by default, Python itself doesn't care, unlike Godot that gave us a definitive error message. And it even goes further than that. Say we just declare a variable in Python and don't assign it to anything. What happens? Hmm, it's not actually defined. Say we just declare it in GDScript and run the program. Didn't have an error message. What's going on here? Well, let's inspect a little bit more. And we see our length was zero. When declared as a string, that variable exists and gets a default value for strings, which is an empty string. We can even compare it like this. True. Or we can say, not that. And apparently, empty strings are considered to be falsy in GDScript. If I don't declare a type, we get null by default. So some kinds of values in GDScript are not nullable. And the top type in GDScript is called variant. Other types that aren't objects or nullable include int, float, array, dictionary, and more. And yes, you do have to declare your variables in GDScript. This is no good. So people say that GDScript and Python are a lot alike. Some of the syntax is similar. It includes indentation. 
and GDScript is primarily a dynamic language like Python, there's a lot of things that are very different in the semantics. By the way, just to prove this thing is a class, let's instantiate the class defined by the script as a whole. I haven't tried this yet quite. Let's see if it works. Oh, I probably should use correct syntax. Dot new in Godot. And apparently that doesn't work. So I might need to ask Godot to reassess what all the different types are. Okay, that's done. And now it did work, although we had stack overflow from the infinite recursion here. So let's not do that anymore. Instead, let's create something of type something. Okay, so now we have a new kind of thing. We have an instance of something that prints out the string form of ref counted. Whenever you define your own class, the default supertype is ref counted. And ref counted is a subtype of object. And the ref counted things are the only things that get reference counted. So presumably we have a reference defined here. It gets printed, goes out of scope, and gets cleaned up. What happens if we make a circular reference? Does Godot handle that in its reference counting? Let's try. Thing dot internal equals thing. Let's try this now. And we see warning object db instances leak to exit. And let's try running that with verbose to see what happens. Verbose. Okay. It says it was something of type something that wasn't freed, which gives us at least some information. And when you're running in the Godot engine editor, you actually have access to things like monitors on memory and objects allocated over time. So anyway, if I do want to have circular references, we should do weak ref for that. And now if I try running this, there's no leak. Weak references also exist in Python, but they're not required for reference counting to clean up cycles because Python handles cycles automatically. So for example, let's create a new something. And let's assign that thing's internal to itself again. The question is, how can we verify this actually gets cleaned up? Well, that doesn't tell us too much yet. And there could be different ways of going about this to get information out of Python to say whether something's been cleaned up or not. But I'm going to go about it by actually making a weak reference to the thing itself. So internally, it's not a weak reference. It just has circular referencing here. But I'll make a weak reference to the thing to see if it disappears and gets collected. Let's do this first of all. Let's force some collection and see if we still have access through our weak reference. And it looks like we do. But what happens if we delete thing, meaning we no longer have any local references to it, and then we collect and try to get our weak reference access again? If we do that, we see none here out of our second attempt to access the weak reference after we no longer have a strong reference to it. So here we can see that Python has indeed collected something despite internal cycles. And again, that's something GDScript does not do. So you need weak references for your cyclical links if you want to make sure it gets released. But it also turns out in GDScript that you can make things that aren't reference counted. And if you want to clean up those things manually, you call free on them. Let's try freeing first a reference counted thing and see what happens. Can't free a reference. Okay. By reference, they mean ref counted thing. In earlier versions of the Godot engine, they just called it reference. So that's no good. Let's make something that extends object instead. Where again, ref counted is a subtype of object. And ref counted is the default super type when we make a new class. But if we explicitly extend object, then we have to free manually. Ooh, instances leak to exit. Let's free it. Okay, so now it got freed. And I printed a freed object. Because once it's been freed, that's the type that Godot sees it as. Let's try freeing twice. Let's see if we have manual memory management, do we have memory safety risks here? Well, let's see here. And we see that we have an error for double free detected. Now there's a core dump here does bother me. And I don't know if they guarantee detecting double freeze. If they do, then you should be memory safe, although crashing is no fun. By the way, I have seen the Godot editor crash, and I'm not sure what kinds of bugs cause that, perhaps just internal things. I have not found definitive statements of whether they consider GDScript to be memory safe or not. But let's try doing things with an object after it's been freed. And we see here that we can't do that. And this isn't even a crash, there's no core dumping here. This is just checked and reported as an error of something bad that I did. So I think it's possible a GD script is designed to be memory safe. And just earlier today, I happened to see a news report claiming that Python is memory safe as well. But that's not necessarily true. OK, 
Okay, so here I'm using C types and treating something as a pointer to a string and getting its value out. And I'm using a trick here to get a value for an address that's possibly in the memory space of the program. This is built into Python. It's designed for being able to interact with C libraries, for example. You can also just use it to subvert memory safety. Let's try that. Oh, I forgot to save. Save, run again. And we see here that I'm getting arbitrary random memory from inside my program. So no, Python is not memory safe by default because they expose features you can just use by default that subvert memory safety. I don't know if there's obscure errors of GDScript where I can do the same. Oh, and before I go, one other thing on type safety in GDScript. Let's do some static type inference of an array of ints and print that out. Let's see what happens. We got three, four, five, okay. So the question is, is this typed as an array of ints or is it typed as just an array? And they do call it array instead of list in Godot. So let's try saying thing zero equals high. What happens? It's fine to do that. Internally, it's variant type, but we can, if we want to, enforce the type of what's inside of the array. We could either cast it here and then get our error, or we can be explicit on the other side. Either one gives a tip to Godot that only ints can be stored inside this array. Cannot assign a value of type string as int. And again, this is being statically checked. And just to prove we could assign otherwise, let's say two here. Okay, two, four, five. Let's go back to the broken thing. And just to prove this is being done at runtime and not just at compile time, let's do something else. var other equals thing. And let's change something inside of other. So now other is not statically typed. Let's see what happens if we try this. We get a runtime error of can't assign string into typed array of type int. No more parse error, it's not statically checked, but it is still checked. By the way, when you have these static errors, the ones that show up as parse errors, they actually get highlighted in the Godot editor while you're typing. We just don't see that here in VS Code, at least not with the configuration I have. And sadly, dictionaries, which do exist in GDScript, just like in Python, they do not have type arguments to control what's stored inside of a dictionary. And that's something you do have in Python. So for example, I can say var more dictionary equals something, print more, run this. I'm going to say anything like dictionary of string to int, for example. That doesn't exist. Again, what you can do in Python, although again, typically erased at runtime. Anyway, so hopefully that's something they might add in the future. But meanwhile, as we see here, what is claimed to be a type in GDScript is checked dynamically as well as statically. So it might even be a sound type system. I haven't verified that either. But if it is, presumably there's possibilities in the future for things like pre-compiling things to native code for semi-high-speed execution. I don't know if that's on the radar either, but it seems like something that could possibly happen in the future. Anyway, this has been an intro to one part of comparing GDScript and Python, understanding some differences about the language, and some of how GDScript works for programmers. I hope it's been fun, and if you like the video, be sure to subscribe. Bye, y'all.